Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Wednesday, May 22nd. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in 101 days, the game against Michigan in 192 days. It has been a tumultuous, let's say, year or two in the college football world. And things got a little crazier on Tuesday with the announcement that there's a lawsuit between a college football player, a current college football player, and the sitting head coach of what is now his team's arch rival. Oh boy, it's about NIL. Just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier and or any stupider, here we are, Jaden Rashada suing Billy Napier at Florida. Oh man. So we're going to try to be talking about this because this feels like this might not be the last time you hear something like this happening. And boy, I don't know how school, how much schools are going to like this. I suspect not very much. We're going to bring in Tony Gerderman of BuckeyeHuddle.com to talk about it. Tony, I guess let's start with well, first of all, Jaden Rashada is now the quarterback, back quarterback at Georgia. I did not realize that until that until that story story came across. He was at Arizona State last year, so the backup quarterback at Georgia now suing the head coach of Florida, among others. Can you explain a little bit about why he's doing that? Well, and the lawsuit says that um, Florida head coach Billy Napier and uh, uh, Florida Gator Booster and part of their collective. Uh, defrauded Rashada out of, uh, quote, millions of dollars by backing out on a promised $13.85 million agreement over the course of four years. I think that comes out to about $3.5 million per year had he stayed all four years and uh, didn't receive any of that. In fact, another part of the lawsuit is based on the fact that uh, by agreeing to this loss, uh, agreeing to this deal that never came to be, he missed out on what he said, like a $9 million deal for Miami. So there, there's some damages there for that. But also, like, some of the only money or maybe the only money that he got from Florida he had to use to pay back Miami and, and Miami <laughs> booster John Ruiz for the money that he, he got fronted, basically. So this one is, uh, boy, this is straight out of the program. Uh, if they reboot the program, the movie, the program, the famed <laughs> college football movie from the nineties, it would involve something like this. Yeah, it is a pretty wild tale. And this was one of the, this is one that you sort of knew was kind of going off the rails, even as it was happening, you sort of heard the, you heard the the talk that, you know, he had gotten some enormous mo- sum of money from, uh, from Florida, or had at least been promised that. And then very quickly, as soon as this, as soon as he signed, you heard, well, now, you know, now this has sort of fallen through and he transferred virtually immediately. This is one where I'm sure there are going to be other cases like this. I'm going to be so fascinated to see what documentation is there, because you hear all of these crazy NAL numbers and, you know, behind the scenes, we get told sometimes, you know, you hear a number and you behind the scenes, you get told like, like a third of that. That's not. That, that's not even close to the actual number. I I am going to be so interested to see, uh, was an SEC head coach stupid enough to put something in writing, uh, either via text or via, uh, I don't know, contract or something? This That's going to be fascinating to see. I'm going to be also interested to see how, how strongly does Florida defend itself here? Because Florida is not actually a named party in this. The university is not a named party in this. It's the head coach. So the university which is probably not all that thrilled with Billy Napier's on-field performance since he took over as the head coach. This might actually be an opportunity for Florida to, if Billy Napier has done something stupid and uh, put something in writing, uh, boy, this feels like this might be a real opportunity for Florida to rid itself of a uh, rid itself of a head football coach that they might not be all that thrilled with right now. Yeah, Billy Napier, 11 and 14 at Florida, 6 and 10 in SEC play since coming over from Louisiana Lafayette. So yeah, this would be an easy way to get out of what is, I'm sure, still a very fat contract. But yeah, I'm interested to see. There are some text messages coming out now, and uh, with with the attorneys that are involved, and and the fact that you have agents and attorneys trying to make these deals happen, there's going to be such a paper trail that uh, is going to really put people in a really bad light or in a, in a light. I do wonder, can the, will the NCA do anything about this? Because right now, any, any type of punishment about some NIL stuff is going to 
be uh, almost like instantly uh, litigated. Although, as you said, Florida might be like, uh, we're not, this is, we're not part of this. This is all on the Napier. So if you want to go after him, <laughs> more power to you because we will help you. And, and so I'm still fascinated to find out what happens with the, the Miami aspect of this because the, the lawsuit alleges that there's a promise from Miami and, or the collectives or John Ruiz life wallet. The money people at Miami of nine and a half million dollars and John Ruiz on Tuesday came out and said, no, it was never anywhere near that amount. We offered him a, a much smaller amount. And so, um, it just the, the, the correspondence that will come out of this. And the thing is, Tom, the thing I love about this is players have been going to school for money because they've been offered, they've been paid or offer of payments for ever. And players have been getting, uh, the, the money people have been backing out on those, on, on that money forever as well. Don't tell me this is the first time this has ever happened, but you couldn't go forward anymore. It's like calling the cops to say, Hey, somebody just stole my drugs. You know, can I, can I, can I get some help here? Like you can't do anything about it before. Now you can actually do something about it because it's, it's out in the open. And so I, I do wonder, um, how much more we'll see of this or how much, uh, you, you, if you are going to make promises, you better follow through on them. That's both the player and the outlets, you know, promising the money. Cause you know, look at, look at Marvin Harrison and fanatics right now. Marvin Harrison is being sued by fanatics. So like we're getting into a, it's a litigious college football has been, uh, for the last couple of years. Now you're seeing it individually as well. And if, if promises are made, promises better be kept. Yeah. And then the question is now, now the players have more recourse in this kind of thing. The question is, what kind of recourse does the NCAA have? Cause you got to remember the NCAA was going after Tennessee in a sort of a related matter a little while ago. And then the Tennessee state legislature just said, nope, now you can, now this is all legal. Crime is now legal in the state of Tennessee. And so that has kind of brought the NCAA enforcement thing to a halt, which means there's a pretty good roadmap if the NCAA wants to go after schools for this. So I don't know how much they're going to be able to go after them. Uh, that's, that is all kind of TBD at this point. So that covers one, uh, big money college football news, uh, story on, uh, on Tuesday. Another one coming out of state college, a uh, bigger sum of money, much bigger sum of money. Uh, Penn State is uh, announced a, the board approved. A up to seven hundred million dollar renovation of Beaver Stadium. You know, Tony, we have been to Beaver Stadium many times over the years. We are going back there again this fall. Uh, I can't wait to bump my head on the ceiling in the press box, which is too low because there are exposed beams. That is a tradition unlike any other. This is, you know, P Penn State's, you know, Beaver Stadium. Also, from the outside, people have long said it looks like an erector set. Like it's, it it, it has been done very piecemeal over the years. And they've added stuff here and there. They've not done a major renovation in more than 20 years, though now it sounds like big, big changes are coming. You see some of these renderings, and it looks like a you, the erector set aspect of it is is gone. And I think that's obviously a step in the right direction. But the first time I saw this, seven hundred million dollars, I was like, for for what? Like, what does a new stadium cost? Like twice that? And and uh, this is this is something where um, you immediately think like Ohio Stadium has been around for over 100 years now. I, I there's been no talk about uh, anything there, and then, then to Penn State just to pop up with like 700 million dollars or a proposed um, this is hey this is all it's going to cost, and this is what it's going to be, and it's the modernization of uh, you know widening concourses, uh, escalators. Uh, fortunately, uh, some press box amenities and, and, and I do know that, uh, they, they, when, when we complain or when I complain about the press box to somebody at Penn State, it's like, well, we, it was just renovated recently. And I think you said 20 years. I don't know if it, if that was part of that, but it's a dangerous place. I mean, you got some, some wonky steps. You got some narrow walkways. You, you, it's like, um, you ever see like, um, like a, like a cat try to walk through a tube and turn around in that tube. And it's like, you know, you don't really have that much room. That's, that's what the, the food line is at, in a Penn state press box where you're going through these narrow, narrow walkways and you're trying to come back. So it's, 
it's a terrible venue. Now, um, th- that's just one aspect. I'm sure more, there's a reason that, that you want to do this and that people want this done. Recruiting is one small aspect of it, but, um, I do wonder, Tom, once this happens, does this start forcing other Big Ten programs to start looking at what they've got? And we know Ohio Stadium did the facade, gosh, what was that, 20 years ago now at this point? Um, does this start to kick off some an, another arms race? That's, I think the answer to that is uh, let's find out what happens with the House case. Because uh, speaking of college football litigation, there's, you know, there is a looming, this could be, you know, seven to $10 million a year per school in terms of uh, annual payouts that you've got to have for players. That's a whole separate conversation. We've talked about it on the show before, but that's a whole separate conversation. I don't know that anyone has a tremendous degree of uh, confidence that they know exactly what their budgets are going to look like five years from now, let alone 30 years from now or whatever the time horizon on paying off $700 million worth of debt is. That, that is a uh, that is a gutsy move to do that right now. But Northwestern, of course, has torn down Ryan Field and is building its own shiny palace. That one is supposed to be just privately funded and just, you know, they, they just get their new stadium and ta-da, that's it. But yeah, this is this is a a, a dicey time to be looking at, at uh, big facilities changes like that. Ohio State has talked about re- redoing the Woody Hayes Athletic Center or upgrading it or whatever whatever that ends up being that's another one where boy there's that's a lot of money tied up there and uh, you know that that i don't know how confident they are that they know exactly where that money's coming from yet because there are a lot of there's a lot of uncertainty on balance sheets these days as you're sort of trying to project things moving forward in the college sports realm one thing tony that i did think was interesting they had even if this had not gotten through they had a list of changes that were going to get made this year at beaver stadium anyway one of them, winterization. Tony, I think the uh, the college football winter winter is coming, as they said on Game of Thrones, and uh, winter is coming to college football because you may have a, you may be hosting college football playoff games at home, and uh, you can no longer just shut your stadium down uh, on Thanksgiving weekend. No, you got to keep that plumbing intact and ready to go at a moment's notice, and uh, it, it reassures that. If Penn State is hosting a, has the opportunity to host the game, they won't move it to uh, Indianapolis or I don't even know what what kind of Syracuse. Like, what's the closest dome stadium to to, to Penn State at this point? I don't know. Yeah, either either the uh, Syracuse Carrier Dome or uh, the practice bubble at Rutgers. I think would be the closest domes to uh, to Penn State. But yes, that's uh, one of those one of those little sign of the times things that uh, you know. Th- there is plenty of change coming. To college football, that's just one little one little small indication of uh, what those changes are going to be. If you actually want to hear us talk about all those changes coming to college football this year, well, Tony and I just did a Buckeye Weekly episode on Tuesday, drafted all of the things that are the changes coming to college football this year in terms of what are we most looking forward to to least looking forward to. You can find that show on the Buckeye Weekly podcast feed. That is uh, you, wherever you find this show, you can find Buckeye Weekly. Just search Buckeye Huddle to find all of our great shows including the Skull Session Recruiting Podcast as well that Mark and uh, Kevin do. They are still on the uh, on their road road trip to the Southern Swing, talking to a bunch of really, really significant and uh, highly ranked players all across the South. They just talked to Dorian Brew down in Texas, the former Ohio, former Northmont, Ohio cornerback, who is ranked as the number four corner in the class. Ohio State already has commitments for the number one and number two corners in the class. Can they add the number four corner? Well, Mark and Kevin talked to him. Get the uh, the inside details on all that. You can find that at BuckeyeHuddle.com on the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse. It is members only. So if you want to sign up, you can sign up today. Get access to our annual subscription sale. That's going to be wrapping up real soon. So if you've been thinking about it, this is the time to do it. Don't miss out. That's not going to be com- that's not going to come back in three weeks. And once it's once it's gone, it's gone. So sign up today at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.